Hi, it's Nick from The Run Testers, and this is our review of the Apple AirPods 3. Start with the design, and obviously what you've got here is the kind of classic AirPods design, which is an open fit style bud with no kind of in-ear tips, wings, hooks, anything. It just sits in the ear, and you hope it doesn't fall out. You know, it's a simple design. It's similar to what you're getting with a past AirPods. These are smaller, obviously, than the AirPods 1 and 2. They look a little bit more like the AirPods Pro with the kind of short stem, which, and that stem also has the force touch controls that were kind of introduced with the AirPods Pro. So that means like, you know, a little squeeze for play, double squeeze for skip, that kind of thing. Big kind of upgrade here is in the adaptive EQ and spatial audio you're getting on the buds. So the adaptive EQ, there's no customizable EQ for the AirPods in the app like you get with a lot of headphones, but instead they'll kind of sense your music, your ear shape, your surroundings, and try and deliver the best sound experience for you, you know, kind of automatically. And then spatial audio is something you can turn on and it creates just kind of slightly more atmospheric feel. There's um, spatial audio with head tracking. So if you're watching like a video with music uh, or, you know, or just, you know, a film or something, as you turn your head, the sound will adjust to just come in through this ear from the screen to create kind of like I said a bit more of an atmospheric kind of a real life experience um, I find even if you're just using the non head tracking audio the spatial audio I think is quite nice for a lot of the music I listen to I like kind of indie music with a lot of kind of depth and warmth and not necessarily booming bass but it does create a nice kind of atmospheric feel to your sound uh, the battery is a little bit of a bump on the airpods it's up to six hours instead of five hours in the buds and then you get another 30 hours in the case it also will work with MagSafe charging uh, the buds are IPX4 rated, uh, which is not fully waterproof, but it's kind of been the rating on all of Apple's headphones uh, and lots of other brands as well use IPX4. It's kind of the minimum I look for in running headphones. Like, like I said, I've used IPX4 headphones a lot in the rain when sweating a lot and haven't had any problems, but yeah, they're not fully waterproof like you will find on some sports buds. However, one bonus is that the case itself is also IPX4 rated, so that gives you a little bit of extra water resistance there if you're bringing the case with you in a running belt or something like that. Connectivity is obviously really, really good of Apple stuff. I tend to actually use a lot of like Apple stuff, like my phone, laptop, watch, all that, and these connect very seamlessly and move between them very easily, as you'd expect from another Apple product. It comes to the price, uh, it's high. We're gonna talk about the price a fair bit, unfortunately, in this video. They come in at £169 in the UK or $179. The AirPods 2, these are actually the AirPods 1, but they look a bit like this. The AirPods 2 are now down to £119 in the UK or $129 in the US, whereas the AirPods Pro, which obviously have active noise cancellation uh, and the kind of silicon in-ear tips, are £239 in the UK and $249 in the US. So we we'll start with the fit because obviously a lot of people will look at the AirPods and think these aren't going to work for any kind of exercise. And that's kind of how I thought about the original AirPods, but it turns out they have a really good fit for me. So it it will be something that works or doesn't work for you. Like I actually really struggle with in-ear buds. The AirPods Pro would often actually kind of squirm loose from my ear on the run because of the in-ear tip, whereas the original AirPods always just sat very nicely on my ear and I could use them you know, for long runs with no problems at all. That's the same with the AirPods 3. You know, you just pop them in your ears, you kind of forget about them, they're very lightweight, and you just go off and run, and they never move an inch for me, really. Uh, I've also used them for kind of other workouts, even kind of yoga with a bit of inversions in it, and they pretty much stay in place very nicely. So I really like the fit of them. It's very uncomplicated, unfussy. It won't get kind of painful over time because there's nothing really sticking into your ear. But obviously, the lack of an in-ear tip or any kind of, kind of wing or anything means that the sound is, like I said, a bit more open. You're not going to get passive noise cancellation here you don't really get like extra booming bass from having the tip deeper into your ear so it really won't you know won't work for everyone and obviously some people they will just fall out because it isn't a very secure fit well i actually quite like the fact that they are a bit more open like on the run it means you know a lot of headphones have kind of awareness most but you don't really need that with these because you are quite aware because they allow in a fair bit of external noise just because there is no passive noise cancellation so you know probably by now you'll know if the airpods work for you or not but i like the fit personally uh, just because it is uncomplicated but it will reduce things like noise cancellation and, and, and indeed sound quality because you're not getting a kind of full in-ear tip that blocks out external noise. Uh, the other thing I'd quickly say on it is um, if you are finding the fallout of your ear, you can buy kind of third-party silicon wings online. Uh, that's something I did for the AirPods Pro because they weren't really working for me. You know, spend a couple of quid on like a set of loads of these silicon tips and you slip them on before a run. It's a bit more of a hassle, but it does mean that they'll be extra secure if you do want to use AirPods, but find the fit doesn't work for you.
So first thing to say on sound quality is that it's better than I expected. Um, it's a little bit limited by the open design, um, which you know, will reduce things like bass and stuff like that. But for open fit earbuds, I would say the sound was really impressive and I really enjoyed the spatial audio. Like I mentioned earlier, I, I do think it, yeah, it, it makes music sound a bit more kind of, like I say, deep and atmospheric and I really like using it. And just in general, I'd say the sound is pretty surprisingly kind of powerful and kind of full for, for buds that seem like they might be a little bit weedy on that front. Um, I didn't really notice much in the adaptive EQ, I will say that. I didn't notice it changing much. The sound always sounded pretty good to me, but um, but never really amazing. And I think that's the point here. Like if you are purely looking at sound quality as one of the main, main factors in your choice of sports headphones, I don't think the AirPods 3 are gonna be a top choice. I don't think really any open fit headphones are going to be your top choice. This isn't, I'm gonna say sound quality isn't a selling point of these headphones, but if you really want an open fit design, then it's pretty good. It's probably the best I've come across from open fit headphones. Yeah, and they will you know, definitely get the job done. Music is enjoyable to listen to. If you're someone who actually just likes to chuck headphones in and listen to like podcasts, you're not actually that fussed about like, things like bass and treble and all that, then they'll do the job perfectly well. But yeah, you're gonna find better sound quality elsewhere. Uh, I'd say the battery life holds up to the estimates, you know, the kind of six hours in the buzz and then another 30 in total in the case. Uh, I've been using them for kind of six, seven days and the case is now empty, but the buds are still, you know, fully charged. So yeah, I'll get for a week pretty comfortably. You know, that usually tends to include kind of five to eight hours of kind of activity and then I've been using them a lot as my kind of just general headphones. So yeah, I think the battery life's fine on these. It's um, You'll find headphones with more in the buds for sure, even ones with ANC. But, you know, six hours of 30 in the case is pretty good. And there's also a useful quick charge feature where five minutes in the case will net you an hour of playback. Overall, I like the AirPods 3 a lot. They're very convenient. They connect very easy to everything. They are comfortable to use for long periods. And you can just, you know, kind of just pop them in your ears. And if you have a fairly casual approach to your music, um, they'll work really well, I'll say that. They'd never be the kind of headphones that I'd select. You know, if I've, there's a new album out by a band I really like, I really want to zone in and listen to this album, um, this wouldn't be the kind of headphone i go for. That They aren't top notch when it comes to sound quality, but you know, for day-to-day -day life, just chuck a pair of headphones in, put on a playlist or a podcast even when you're running, they work really well, I think. And I do think they are good for running. So like I say, the fit for me is good, it's fine. They stay in place, you get a little bit of extra awareness. Uh, you know, it just kind of works for me. Like if you don't like the fit of AirPods, these are gonna be exactly the same. They are gonna fall out of your ears, but you can buy, you know, like I say, third-party silicon wings if you wanna use them and keep them in your ears, but you're gonna find more secure fits elsewhere for sure. If you're using an ear hook or an ear wing, that will get a more secure fit, but then you'll lose kind of the very, almost, you know, not there feel of these headphones, which just kind of sit there and uh, don't kind of impinge on your ear in any way. So overall, like, I liked using them, but the price is really, really high, and it's simply too high, in my opinion. £169 puts them in the bracket of just some really fantastic sports headphones and general headphones, you know. You're talking there, you're in the bracket for what I consider to be the best kind of all-round sports headphones going. There's like, you know, the Jabra Elite 7 Active are the same price, you know, they're brilliant. And then there's the JBL Reflect Flow Pro, a little bit cheaper, a little bit pricier as the Jaybird Vista 2. These are kind of the three sets of headphones I think most people using headphones for sports use would should be going for. Basically, you know, with those headphones, you're going to get better waterproofing. You're going to get ANC modes, awareness modes, kind of a more secure fit with things like wings. A longer battery lives and all of them, uh, more impressive sound quality, and you can adjust the EQ for them. You can also adjust the controls on them. Um, and just basically on features and real-world performance, the AirPods 3 can't really compete with them. Like what they've got going for them is they're very easy, comfortable. Just chuck them in your ears, off you go, and they're fine, and they sound better than you probably expect. But that doesn't add up to 169 pounds in my opinion, not when there are those fantastic other options out there. Uh, and even if you are really in on the open fit design, because all of those headphones kind of I've mentioned do have an in-ear tip or a wing or something, then there are cheaper options, um, you know, including the AirPods 2, which are 119 pounds. Like these are an upgrade in terms of sound and battery life, but again, if it's, you're all in on sound and battery life generally, there are, there are better options than uh, open fit headphones. And then there's the Huawei Freebuds 4, which I also really like using that have an open fit design with the long stem that are a bit more like uh, kind of classic AirPods design. Again, they're a fair bit cheaper. They are £130, often reduced to around £110. And I've just started testing out the Adidas Zen NE01 headphones. The cheapest model in that range is an open fit design headphone with a long stem, but it's got a silicon covering, which creates a slightly more secure fit and does a similar job all round to the AirPods for £85. I just think if this kind of headphone, which is a little bit more basic in many ways than others, and really the strength of it is the convenience and the fact it's you know fun and easy to use, you shouldn't be looking at 170 pounds basically. It should be far closer to 100 pounds. They are an upgrade on the AirPods 2 for sure. And I really love using them. I love throwing them in my ears. They're very easy to use. They're probably the kind of thing I will use a lot for my running going forward, but 
they're just probably too expensive i think to be recommended especially for sports use when you have got such amazing options out there that just deliver so many more features for the same price uh, and produce the goods in the real world as well so yeah that's probably the summation yeah, really nice headphones nice little upgrade but just a bit too expensive That's it guys, that is our review of the Apple AirPods 3 for runners. Let us know what you think in the comments. Do you use AirPods for your running? Would you never use them? What are you using at the moment? What are your favorite headphones for sports? Um, let us know down there. We'll try and get back to you. Please like, subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.